Hello and welcome back. In this unit, we're going to be talking a lot about social media, uh, specifically about different channels you can use for marketing for social media, and also social media strategy, which is what the next few videos will get into. Uh, but today we're going to concentrate on the channels. I want you to get an idea for the kinds of different types of social media out there. Many of them you've probably interacted with. Some of them you may not be aware that marketers could actually use as a form of social media uh, to interact with their consumers. Uh, and we'll also talk a little bit about like the advantages and disadvantages about different types of social media and, and how you might interact with them. So let's get right into it. Uh, so, you know, social is quickly becoming the dominant marketing and conversation channel of the 21st century, right? It's, it's becoming a place where people find more of their news than ever before. It's where they find out about new products, new ideas, new concepts that they're interested in trying out. And for that reason, it's important for marketers, even if they're never intervening in that conversation, to be aware of the conversations that are happening there. Social media I broadly define as any media that are designed from the beginning to enable conversations about that media. This is as opposed to a broadcast oriented media where I put something up and I send it out to you, right? Many media forms uh, uh, are in this space, right? So for instance, online video, you know, is essentially somewhat of broadcast media because I put it up and I broadcast it out. But many of the online media platform, online video platforms are set up to allow people to have conversations. They can record videos back, they can uh, comment on the videos, things like that. And, and so this interaction can happen through a number of different ways, right? It can actually happen through commenting, sharing, sending, copying, or even liking or favoriting, right? Um, but if you think about the traditional media forms, these are all things that can't happen very easily in those forms, right? You can't like a, a, a TV commercial very easily unless it's on an online video platform. The format also could be written, visual, audio, or even interactive, right? You could have, in fact, a, a, um, a version that's you're reading text and you're writing text back, you're recording video, you're sending video back out, you're recording audio, sending audio back out, or it could be something like a, you know, a video game almost, where you're, you're kind of interacting with a medium uh, like Minecraft or something along those lines, right? That, uh, and, and all of those have been used to some extent to the, to, for marketing at various times. So let's talk now about, now that we've got a sense about what we mean when we say social media, what's the difference between social media and traditional media, right? Well, traditionally, traditional media is an outbound broadcast uh, type of, of media, right, where you're sending things out. Social media is usually inbound, and what I mean by that is that um, a lot of times you're not, you're not giving, you're not making people watch content. It's the fact that they actually are coming to you to find the content. Right? And it's narrow cast. It's usually targeted a smaller group of audience or smaller niche audience rather than targeting, say, the entire U.S. population. Traditional media tends to be fixed and permanent. Once a, a commercial is put together, it's aired, it's done. Right? There's nothing you can do about it. Social media is constantly changing. If I don't like the way a particular online video looks or if I don't like the way a particular uh, blog post reads, I can edit and change it to uh, the best of my ability to try and make it more meet consumer demand. Right? Traditional media tends to be costly. You know, it costs a lot of money to put together, say, a Super Bowl ad or something like that. Whereas uh, social media is inexpensive. A lot of times the actual access to the platforms is minimal or free in terms of the cost. And, uh, the, and what's really you're paying for is you're paying for the creation of content, right? Which is a very different level of, uh, of uh, expense. Um, Traditional media tends to be pre-created. In other words, the advertiser uh, comes up with the content, thinks about it and describes it and puts it out there. And once it's out there, there's no dialogue about what happened with that content. Social media, on the other hand, tends to be real-time and conversational. I'm creating content, you're responding to it. This is particularly the case when we talk about social media in the context of something like customer service. So when a firm is responding on Twitter to a complaint that's made, like, that's a very conversational tone rather than a, a pre piece of pre-scripted dialogue. Right? Traditional media is controllable. I own the media, right? I am, I'm paying someone to broadcast it, but I own the way it's out there. I can even dictate what shows it's shown against. I can even dictate what kind of win it's going to be. I can pay for all that. Social media, you can't control any of that. 
It is directable in the sense that I can say I want it to be on this platform or I want it to be viewed in this particular context, but in the end, the consumers can take it and do whatever they want with it, and all you have the choice to do is really kind of direct how it goes. Right? Traditional media a lot of times takes a fixed amount of time to create. You set up a budget saying we're going to write this commercial and we're going to be done with it. Social media is a lot more time consuming because it has to be constantly monitored. You have to see how people are interacting with the content, what they're saying about it, and then respond to it or not respond to it as you decide to do. Traditional media tends to be one channel with one media. It's television. It's a radio app. It's a print circular. Social media is about all media on all the channels, right? You can have video and you can have audio and you can have um, links to uh, little app games all built into one particular context and that can be distributed on many, many different channels from email to um, a social media platform to your website, right? Traditional media in the end is, is finite, finite, right? It's, it, it, it's bounded in space and time. Social media can constantly be added to, and to that extent, it's somewhat infinite in its uh, respects. So before we get into the channels in particular, let's talk about the fact that there are three main uses of social media, right? So uh, marketing uses of social media. So I can do a couple of different things. And this is kind of, in traditional, a lot of advertising can be broken down to paid, earned, and owned, right? But in social, it particularly plays a large role. So I, I can pay for advertising on social, right? I can create an ad, and I can have that ad uh, be run alongside certain other content. Uh, so for instance, someone goes to Twitter, searches for a certain key, key term, I can have a promoted tweet that shows up in that ad. And that's kind of like, that's a very traditional form of advertising, right? I can have owned content on social. This means that I created the content for my own channel. So for instance, I can have my own Twitter channel where I put content out there that people can read, right? And that is part of the social media community, just like any other user's content is part of the social media community. And I can have earned content on social. I can listen to and take parts in conversations that other people who are not the focal brand are having about the brand on social, right? So I can interact with the conversations they're having and see how I might use them to kind of promote my brand, to provide them with solutions, and to, you know, in, in general, increase the, the value of my brand equity. Given those three notions, I want to now talk about a breakdown in the taxonomy of social. So, I spent some time thinking about all the different types of social media out there. And really, I think that there are kind of these four larger categories, which are social network social media, uh, where the font the, the where the emphasis is really on connections between individuals in the social space. Uh, there is the contents of content creation, right? Where we're talking about social that is um, the, where we're creating content and putting it out there, it's a little more broadcast oriented, but there's an interaction that can occur once that initial broadcast has happened. There's bookmarking and aggregating, so this tends to deal with social curation and content sharing, where users identify pieces of content they like and share it with others. Uh, and there's location-based social media, where it's really focused on a particular location. Now, within each of those categories, there are subcategories. Mainly, the social networks and content creation ones are the ones you might think of the most. And within social networks, the, the traditional school of social media here is things like Facebook, Google+, and LinkedIn, which really are kind of quasi-broadcast social media, right? Like, I put content out, and it goes out to all the people who are connected to me on these social media, right? That's as opposed to the newer generation of social media apps like WhatsApp, WeChat, and Line, or Snapchat for, to some extent as well, where we put the content and we send it to a particular user, right? Um, now, I gotta admit, you know, none of these distinctions are absolutely uh, uh, perfect and crisp, and social network apps kind of blur with content creation and broadcast blurs with messaging, right? But I'm trying to give you some terminology by which you might think of the differences between these different pieces of content. So then within content creation, we have things like microblogging, which are where there's very short pieces of content like Twitter and Tumblr, blogging, which is longer form content uh, like WordPress and Blogger, photo sharing, right? Sharing of pictures, Instagram, Flickr, Snapchat pictures. And you notice I listed Snapchat there, even though I also mentioned under messaging because it kind of, in the marketing space, it plays almost a broadcast type of role, whereas in the, um, in the, person-to-person uh, -person, uh, place it plays almost a messaging role. 
Um, video sharing, so things like YouTube, Vimeo, and Vine, which uh, recently uh, was shut down, uh, and audio sharing, right? And you know, the number one, I, there's a number of platforms here, but in general, we're, the term that we use to describe this medium is podcasts, right? Recording of audio content that we share with others. Uh, and then bookmarking and aggregating, we're thinking of things like Reddit and Dig, where people can vote up and down on particular pieces of content and identify ones they like. And on location based, we're thinking about things like Foursquare, where you can check into a location, and Yelp and Yik Yak. And some of the other social media players have location based content, right? So Facebook has Facebook check ins, for instance.